to this short presentation on pseudohypoglycemia. We'll briefly go through what is it, how to manage it, how long does it last, and also go through a case example. Let's begin. All right, so before we get into what pseudohypoglycemia is, let's first look at and define what is hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia is generally defined uh, using the Whipple's triad. This involves three things. So first, uh, the person having hypoglycemic symptoms. So either that's neurogenic, which is autonomic, so adrenergic, or cholinergic mediated. So this can include trembling, palpitations, sweating, nausea, anxiety, or it can include the neuroglycopenic symptoms. And this is when the brain is de deprived of glucose, and that can lead to a person having difficulty concentrating, dizziness, weakness, confusion, vision changes. Uh, if it's severe enough, it can lead to a seizure or coma. Next on the triad is the a person having low blood glucose levels. So usually under 4, you may come across uh, less than 3.8 millimoles per liter as well. And finally, the resolution of symptoms after blood glucose levels increase. So for example, if a person has hypoglycemia, they intake a fast-acting carbohydrate, and that brings their blood glucose levels back up into range, and then they feel better. Their symptoms resolve. So this is how we define hypoglycemia. If it falls into these categories, these three things we just mentioned, this is uh, hypoglycemia. Now, with pseudohypoglycemia, it's a little bit different. So let's go into that on the next slide. So what is pseudohypoglycemia? One way to think of this is that it's a false hypoglycemia in that the individual experiences hypoglycemic symptoms even though their blood glucose levels are greater than 4 millimoles per liter. This usually occurs in patients who have become accustomed to having chronic high blood glucose levels. So by having these chronically high blood glucose levels, this alters the threshold or set point for activating, activating these hypoglycemic symptoms. For example, if a person has chronic high blood glucose levels, for example, ranging from 12 to 14 millimoles per liter, when they start treatment, this leads to a decrease or improvement in their blood glucose levels. So now the blood glucose, le glucose levels may be between 6 and 8 millimoles per liter, which is normal. But for this specific individual, 6 to 8 is what's triggering the hypoglycemic symptoms because the person's body was so used to having high blood glucose levels. So this results in the person experiencing hypoglycemic symptoms even though the blood glucose levels are greater than 4 millimoles per liter. Let's look at an example to better understand this. All right, so let's take a look at a hypothetical example. This is how a patient may present. So here we have TJ, He's a type, he has type 2 diabetes, which is not under control, and his A1C is approximately 14%. His blood glucose levels normally range from 14 to 22 millimoles per liter. His doctor decides to put him on insulin therapy. Approximately a few weeks into his therapy, his blood glucose levels improve, now ranging from 6 to 8 millimoles per liter but he complains that he experiences sweating, hunger, palpitations, even though his blood glucose levels, uh, blood glucose reading is 7 millimoles per liter. These symptoms resolve after he ingests glucose. So let's take a look back here. So normally his blood glucose levels are 14 to 22 millimoles per liter. So having chronic high blood glucose level or a pro prolonged period of time, the body has become accustomed to this uh, higher level. So the set point has changed. So for TJ, Anything that drops below 14 millimoles per liter, for example, will trigger those hypoglycemic symptoms. So even though his insulin therapy has improved his blood glucose levels, this is triggering those hypoglycemic symptoms. And after he ingests uh, in glucose, his symptoms resolve. Remember when we define hypoglycemia is using the Whipple's triad. So let's take a look at this again. So does TJ have hypoglycemic symptoms? The answer is yes. Does he have low blood glucose levels under 4 millimoles per liter? No, we can see that it's ranging 6 to 8 millimoles per liter, so that's not technically a low blood glucose level. Next is that resolution of symptoms after blood glucose levels increase. So yes, after he ingests the glucose, this improves his symptoms. So we can see here that uh, in order to define the hypoglycemia, it has to follow this triad here. And in this situation with TJ, is not following to, to this definition. So he's not having a true hypoglycemia, and that's why we term it a pseudo-hypoglycemia. Now let's look at how to manage this. Before we get into the management, I briefly just want to highlight that there are two different subtypes of pseudo-hypoglycemia. 
uh, in type 1, the person would generally present with the typical hypoglycemic symptoms, and the blood glucose levels would generally be above 3.8 millimoles per liter. And this is mainly what we have been covering so far in this presentation. With type 2, it's a little bit more complex, and again, this is just for information purposes. If you want to learn more about the different subtypes, I'll leave a link in the description below. So with, with type 2, the symptoms tend to be more vague, or there may be no symptoms at all. The blood glucose levels tend to be below 3.8 millimoles per liter, and with the type 2 pseudohypoglycemia, there are other factors that may be involved in this, and that could be due to the decrease in blood, capillary blood flow, such as in Raynaud syndrome. There also may be increased glycolysis by the red blood cells or leukocytes, and also may involve uh, hyperviscosity syndromes. Let's go to management now. All right, so moving on to management. So if a person is experiencing hypoglycemic symptoms, we want to test the blood glucose levels. By doing this, this will help to determine if the person is having a true hypoglycemic event. Are the blood glucose levels less than 4 millimoles per liter or greater? Again, regardless, if a person is symptomatic, we're going to treat with 15 grams of a fast-acting carbohydrate. And the purpose here is that we want to relieve the symptoms, even if the blood glucose levels are within range. And this can be done with uh, various formulations of glucose in the form of glucose tablets, sugar, uh, 150 mils of juice or a soft drink, as well as six Lifesaver candies. An important note is that uh, with 15 grams of glucose, this will generally raise the blood glucose levels by 2.1 millimoles in approximately 20 minutes. And again, that's a good idea to be testing the blood glucose levels in that time to see if the blood glucose levels are going up and as well are the symptoms uh, resolving. So how long does this last? So with every individual, everyone is different, everyone is unique. So this will vary with each individual. Over time, as the blood glucose levels become under control, the body will adapt to this change. And the perception of these symptoms at these higher blood glucose levels will slowly resolve. So basically, the body adapts to this new normal threshold or set point also may need to consider a less aggressive treatment. So for example, if a person's on insulin, we may need to uh, consider gradually reducing the blood glucose levels, so, so going at a more slower pace. This will allow the body to become accustomed or acclimatized to the newer normal blood glucose level. And again, it's always important to discuss this with the doctor or the diabetes care team. All right, that concludes the presentation on pseudohypoglycemia. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And again, thanks for watching.